This conference will now. Okay, in the last session, we talked about a document splitting configuration. Now, let us talk about some important information related to our company code. From there, we will continue our baseline configuration. Okay, so after defining company, company code, assignment, chart of account, and document splitting, let us try to understand few points here. Point number one accounting principles to be used in the company okay it's very important for us to understand which accounting principles will be used in our company now when we talk about our company we are creating dell computers india limited now According to us, Dell Computers India Limited is headquartered or is head office in US and we are operating in India. Point number one. So this accounting principles, why do we use accounting principles for reporting purpose? Is that correct? Are used for reporting purposes basically in any organization there will be minimum two accounting principles okay first accounting principle will be IFRS and this is used for group reporting or consolidation purpose Clear. First one will be IFRS accounting principle. This will be used for group reporting or consolidation purpose. Second one will be ICA. When I say ICA, I mean Indian Companies Act. I'll say this is used for local reporting or legal reporting in the country okay second one is your indian companies act which will be used for local reporting or legal reporting within the country now in short for our company code, we require two accounting principles. Now, in fact, any company code that you practice for your practice purpose, make sure you're going to have minimum two accounting principles, which is mandatory. First point is your accounting principle. Clear with accounting principle, you must use two accounting principle. These are standard accounting principles in every organization. IFRS is common for all your company codes. ICA will be replaced by the respective country's accounting principle. In short, you call it as local gap. We call it as local gap. Okay. If you are operating in India, you will be talking about Indian Companies Act. If you are operating any particular country, that country's local accounting principle will be used. Once you decide the accounting principle, next one will be reporting periods or reporting cycle. Okay, so from when to when you will be giving your financial reporting according to each of your accounting principle is second point that we have to understand. Now, if you know that you have two accounting principles in your company code, you must be having each accounting principle representing a different reporting structure. First one, let's say IFRS. Second one is Indian Companies Act. According to Indian Companies Act, what will be the reporting cycle? to 
to March. April to March first. This will be April to March. Let's say according to IFRS, this will be Jan to December. So we have decided that we will be going ahead with two accounting principle IFRS and then for and then Indian Companies Act. For IFRS, your reporting cycle will be Jan to December. For Indian Companies Act, your reporting cycle will be April to March. Third one we have to understand is currencies. Reporting currencies. Here when you talk about reporting currencies, you have to again pay attention on your accounting principle. First thing you have is IFRS. Second one you have is Indian Companies Act. Now Indian Companies Act is your local gap which is used for reporting in the local country or in the legal country. If your Indian Companies Act is used in India, according to India, what is the official or local currency? INR. INR? Yes. So if I am operating in India, I must submit my financial reporting to the local authorities in INR currency only. If I prepare my financials and submit in any other currency apart from INR, it will not be accepted. Your chartered accountant or whosoever will not approve your financials if they are not prepared in INR. No other option if you are operating in India, you must follow your accounting principle called Indian Companies Act and all your reporting numbers must be in INR. Similarly, if you are using IFRS, according to IFRS, we will be using a common global currency, which is always US dollar. Clear? Huh? According to IFRS, we will be using US dollar as our reporting currency. Is that next a one? Is standard, sir, IFRS that can we able to use other other than a USD in IFRS? You can use, but majoritily US dollar will be used. Okay. Okay. Next one is your ledgers. Now here again ledgers are connected to your accounting principle. If you see point one, two, three, everywhere you are talking about accounting principle, IFRS account Indian Companies Act. Here also IFRS Indian Companies Act. Currency also based on IFRS Indian Companies Act. Now ledger also is based on the same. IFRS and Indian Companies Act. Now you will be having two type of reportings. Put reporting. Okay. For Indian Companies Act and IFRS. For Indian Companies Act, we will be using leading ledger. Now, whatever we are writing here are all the standard things that are followed in most of your real time projects. Okay, tomorrow if somebody is asking you blindly inform these points. Now Indian Companies Act you will be using non leading ledger. Okay, for leading ledger it will be IFRS always for non leading ledger it will be your local gap or local accounting principle. In our case for India it will be Indian Companies Act. If you are using any other country, that country's accounting principle will be used for non-leading ledger. Now, after this point number five, I'll simply put types of reporting. Okay, I'll mention two type of reporting. One I'll mention as local reporting. Second point I will mention is group reporting. When we talk about local reporting, 
are we reporting in the country where we are operating am i correct when we talk about local reporting we are talking about the country in which we are currently operating according to our company code dell india private limited in which country are we operating india yeah. india now according to our company code dell india private limited local reporting will be india right in india what is the accounting principle used i see you. indian companies act in india what is the currency used inr inr in india what is the accounting reporting cycle from when to when we need to submit our financials april 1st to march 31st april to march for local reporting okay or for indian companies act which accounting principle will be used sorry which ledger will be used non leading non leading similarly for group reporting for group reporting we are using this for our head office where is our head office us yes our head office is in us for your head office in us which accounting principle are we using ifrs we are using ifrs which currency we are going to use for our ifrs accounting principle usd us dollar what is the reporting cycle we are going to use for ifrs jan to december jan to december okay which ledger are we going to use leading ledger this will be leading ledger now are these two statements clear this one and this one you are able to understand these two lines when i say local reporting i am talking about i am reporting in the country where i am doing my business so in our example we are doing business in india for our company code which we are defining i have mentioned we are reporting or we are doing business in india in india i am using accounting principle indian companies act in india i am doing my reporting in currency called inr in india i am following my reporting cycle from april to march this reporting i am using based on non leading ledger clear there is small doubt uh, what yes. is the difference between uh, country specific chart of account and ica non leading ledger these two are two independent things okay if you want to, if your indian companies act is having any specific reporting requirement let's say indian company companies act is telling you to submit your financials in a specific format wherein your gl account number must be only five digits okay but your operating chart of account may be having gl account length as eight digit yes yes right so in your local countries in the in the respective country there may be a different requirement to submit your financial statements or to submit your financial reporting if any particular country is having certain requirements to meet that requirement you will be creating a new chart of account called country specific chart of account this country specific chart of account is created exclusively to meet your local reporting in that particular country they might tell that your reporting must be only in hindi language you may create your chart of account in hindi language or your indian company act may tell you that this is the format you have to follow and strictly you have to follow these guidelines to prepare or to submit your financial information if there is any such requirement from any particular country you will have to create country specific chart of account to meet these guidelines Okay, so normally so in india is, okay. yeah 
in india such requirement is not there but if you take countries like russia china these countries you have certain such kind of requirements okay there you will have a concept of e reporting e reporting in the sense whenever you finalize your financials you are not manually submitting the data to the government you will have to upload your data into the government portals and in order to upload your data to the different different government portals you must have all the predefined checklist enabled in your chart of account in your reporting they will not accept the data if it is not prepared in the local language every gl account number will have a restriction every gl account description must be there in their local currency they might have certain predefined format only in that format you have to upload the data otherwise data will not be accept, accepted by the government understood sir thank you yeah now these two points clear everyone this is very important if you are not clear with this whatever the baseline configuration we are doing is a big question mark you will never understand why we are doing baseline configuration like this tomorrow if you join any organization first thing that you are going to do is you are going to please be on mute first when you join any organization the first thing that you'll have to do is let's say you will be told that you will be working for this client and these many company codes we have for example you take one company code let's assume that de10 is the company code for which you are going to work initial thing that you have to do from your side is open your system go to quality system or production system check what is their basic structure that is defined now these points even if you want to ask somebody it looks very bad you cannot ask certain basic questions to the other person why are we using leading ledger what is our local currency which accounting principle are we using do not ask these basic questions you must be in a position to get into the system explore all these things on your own for you to do that you have to understand from the beginning on what basis we are creating a company code baseline configuration clear your complete data entry reporting everything is based on this structure whatever is there on your excel sheet currently in short let me write one more point here ledger and accounting principle assignment point number 6 ledger and accounting principle assignment how we are going to decide which ledger will be used for which accounting principle now here you need to use only two points with respect to accounting principle or i'll also put reporting first thing i'll mention local reporting second one i will mention group reporting these are the common reporting terms that are used in any organization clear with these two terms first local reporting and group reporting yes sir local reporting is used at company code level local reporting is used at company code level group reporting is used at group level when you are talking about group reporting group level this is called as consolidation reporting now you have two ledgers one is leading ledger the other one is non leading ledger when you talk about leading non leading ledger you have to be very clear you have to have clear clarity on what basis you are assigning leading ledger non leading ledger to the respective ledgers to the respective reporting or to the respective accounting principle the standard rule that is followed in any project is your leading ledger is always used for which led which reporting group reporting 
for group reporting we will be using leading ledger for local reporting we will be using non leading ledger okay for group reporting we will be using leading ledger for local reporting we will be using non leading ledger this combination is must for you to understand blindly remember this in your mind okay this is what majority of the organizations will follow in real environment and it is very important for you to know these settings even before you complete your baseline configuration because your baseline configuration is dependent on these points if we are not clear on these points whatever the remaining configuration we are doing after document splitting or after this chart of account are created without any clarity right so group reporting you will be using for leading ledger local reporting you will be using for non leading ledger in short leading ledger is always representing ifrs and leading ledger reports are extracted in your dollar currency clear huh? and any specific reporting that you are going to do for indian companies act purpose any specific adjustment you need to make in order to meet your indian accounting standards you will be passing certain adjustment entries in the non leading ledger now one non leading ledger will be used for all the countries you are not going to change non leading ledger based on the country that you are operating for example dal ledger and accounting principle mapping now look at only this point i will tell that dell india dell us dell singapore dell dubai dell australia assuming we are operating in this five countries country number 1 2 3 4 5 5 okay we are operating in this five countries no i'll say company code i'll put accounting principle not i'll not put accounting principle i'll put leading i'll put non leading now according to our earlier statement according to this statement leading ledger is used for which reporting purpose group group reporting leading ledger we will be using for group reporting normally group reporting is used for which accounting principle ifrs ifrs it will be used for ifrs for ifrs which ledger we will be using leading ledger leading ledger for ifrs which currency will be used usd us based for ifrs which reporting cycle will be followed calendar year jan to december jan to december jan to december now ifrs we are going to use for group reporting or consolidation purpose if i come down now what will be the leading ledger what are the codes for leading ledger which ledger is standard which ledger is non leading ledger india all of leading ledger leading ledger is sap standard zeroal it is identified by zeroal yes correct correct 
non leading ledger is please be on mute if you are not talking this is user defined it is identified by two digit alpha numeric code okay leading ledger is sap standard it is always identified by 0l when it comes to non leading ledger this is user defined which means you can create any non leading ledger of your choice but you have to create a non leading ledger with two digit alpha numeric code clear which two digit alpha numeric code you are going to use is your choice now one more point only a single non leading ledger will be used in all the company codes you are not going to create so many non leading ledgers one for each company code that is not the approach only one leading ledger used for all your company codes only one non leading ledger used for all your company codes am i clear if you are using five company codes what will be your leading ledger dell india what is the leading ledger code 0l it will be 0l for dell us 0l singapore 0l dubai 0l australia 0l let's say for non leading ledger you are going to use a user defined two digit alpha numeric code assuming that i will be creating a ledger called dl dell ledger okay i will be creating a non leading ledger as dl for example now what will be the non leading ledger for india dl dl for us dl for singapore dl for dubai dl for australia dl it will be dl now if you see your leading ledger is common for all your company codes your non leading ledger is also common for all your company codes yes sir correct huh? leading ledger non leading ledger we are using commonly for all the company codes if you talk from the leading ledger point of view if you talk from leading ledger point of view you can understand you can give a justification stating we are using ifrs commonly for all the company codes correct for leading ledger we are using ifrs for all the countries or for all company codes we are using same ledger fine but when it comes to non leading ledger are we using same accounting principle no sir no sir right in india you may be using indian companies act in us you may be using us gap in singapore you may be using singapore accounting standards dubai you may be using dubai accounting standards australia you may be using australian accounting standards accounting principle is different in each of these countries or in each of these company codes but still we are using same ledger right even though your accounting principle is different in each of these countries still we are using same ledger yes no yes sir right how you are going to differentiate that for this particular country there will be a different accounting principle now here you have one more point ledger and accounting principle assignment point number 6 we have written for every ledger you need to assign the accounting principle in this step what you are going to do for dl for india company code you are going to assign indian companies act accounting principle 
for the same ledger DL when it comes to Dell US company code you may be assigning US cap accounting principle for the same ledger when it comes to Singapore company code you may be assigning Singapore accounting standard accounting principle likewise for every ledger for every company code there will be a different different accounting principle assignment clear huh? one ledger will have multiple accounting principle assigned based on the company code am i clear Uh, so based on the company code means based on mm, the primary location which prime uh, company is working on right sir correct if your company is working in us you will be following accounting standards of us because it's a legal requirement to follow your us accounting principles to do your accounting similarly if you are operating in singapore you must follow singapore accounting standards if you are working in india you will have to follow Indian Accounting Standards or Indian Companies Act. Based on that only you have to prepare your financials and then submit to the local authorities. Otherwise your financials are not accepted by the local authorities. If your financials are not accepted you cannot submit you cannot release this to the public. Right? Unless your accounting is approved by a chartered accountant if you are working in India are these financial statements valid? no he has to approve. right right your financials must be approved accepted by the chartered accountant so if you are a small company you will go for the small small chartered accounting firms but if you are a big company operating you will be going for the big four auditing companies they will come and audit your financials and they will check all your financials they will check randomly the samples of the transactions that you have posted based on that at the end they are going to approve your financial statements called trial balance pnl balance sheet with a stamp and seal is that correct yes sir perfect so this is what normally happens in every organization now every organization if this is happening this is based on the local law of that particular country Okay, your leading ledger IFRS is not going to be checked by your auditing company. Auditing company is concerned about that local auditing is what they are doing. If you are operating in India, they are going to verify everything according to Indian Companies Act, whether you are following or not. If there is anything which is deviating from your IFRS and accounting principle for India, you may have to pass some entries only in the ledger. There is something called ledger specific posting. I can post a particular entry only in my leading ledger or only in my non-leading ledger to meet certain basic requirements. Okay. Now, considering these points, leading ledger and non-leading ledger, any doubt in this ledger assignment alone? How you are assigning leading ledger, non-leading ledger? Hello. Yes. Yeah. Sir, actually for this uh, leading and non-leading ledgers, uh, the same accounting principles also can you mention that uh, in the table we will have to... Just be on mute once you are done with your question. Let's say I'll put accounting principle. Here I will say Indian Companies Act Okay 
okay let's say here i'll say us gap and here i'll put singapore accounting standards here i'll put dubai accounting standards whatever the accounting principle they follow in dubai that one will become your accounting principle here i'll say australian accounting standards clear yes, but sir uh, did i mention yes. correctly here yes sir i have not mentioned correct what mistake i have done here So yeah, the all these ledgers are non-leading accounting principles, correct? These are all your non-leading ledger accounting principle. Now for leading accounting principle, what will be the accounting principle for leading ledger everywhere? IFRS. IFRS. Clear. In short, if you look at this again, every company code is using two ledgers, one leading ledger, one non-leading ledger, but each ledger is representing a different accounting principle. For India, leading ledger is representing IFRS. Non-leading ledger is representing Indian Companies Act. For US, leading ledger is representing IFRS. Non-leading is representing US CAP. For Singapore, leading ledger is representing IFRS. Non-leading is representing Singapore Accounting Standards and so on. Clear? Yes, sir, uh, I have one question. See, uh, for example, uh, if a company uh, is working only on Indian base, uh, so at that point of view, uh, if we assigned, actually in my project, they have assigned leading ledger and uh, they are reporting to only Indian government. So in that case, accounting principle, we can assign that uh, Indian standard account, right, sir? Yeah, ICA. Yeah. Yes. So no need of IFRS. No need. Because when you are implementing for a particular company, let's say there are certain companies which will be operating only in one country. Let's say if you take up any specific or any particular product based company, which is operating in India. Currently, they may not be operating in out of India. In future, they may not have any options or any thoughts to expanding their business across the globe. They may not be planning to establish in the other countries. In such cases, they may tell, no, we don't want any other reporting. We want our reporting only in INR. We want only one accounting principle. We don't want to use IFRS and all. We don't want to dollar everything. In such a scenarios, you will be creating only one ledger. And that ledger will be your INR, Indian Accounting Standards. But these kind of things are rare. Uh, Even okay, though sir, your uh, client is working in only in India, but in future they might expand their business. Considering that fact, we will be defining like this, but this is purely based on the client decision. But as a consultant, you have to tell this is how the best practice talks about. This is how SAP use is used across all the leading companies. Accordingly, they will take a decision. Please go ahead. So uh, here, um, uh, since I before i said they, these people this uh, my client was using ecc server then they have a plan of rollout to hana so in that case uh, now what they have practicing the the leading ledger zero l with um, the indian companies act so uh, when while we roll out from uh, this system to new hana system can i able to rectify this and make the correction like ifrs and non leading ledger as uh, indian companies act going forward Now, in your ECC system, your current data is showing leading ledger as Indian Companies Act. Yes. 
Now in HANA you want to change your leading ledger as IFRS. The existing leading ledger data should be moved on to non-leading ledger. Yeah. For this straight away we cannot do it. We'll have to approach SAP for this. Because when you move from ECC to S4 HANA, the data that you already have remains as it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to approach SAP stating this is what our current situation. They will tell us what is the best solution for this. Either they will tell that, okay, you can migrate all the data once again in your S4 HANA system or they may tell run these programs and map the target ledgers in S4 HANA. Okay, we'll have to approach uh, SAP for this. Sir, uh, I have another question. Here in non-leading ledger, as you said, uh, these companies are based on the location uh, that uh, non-leading ledger we are going to assign. Then accounting principle, if I come to that point, uh, sir, US gap. So being an Indian uh, consultant, uh, is that mandatory that I know how the US people uh, do the accounting? For example, in India, we follow GST and uh, in Dubai, they don't follow any tax kind of thing. So in such cases, do we need to learn those accounting standards and principles before do we implement or is that how we can face that sir it is not required for us to know those accounting principle it is only required for us to know that if you are using sap for your let's say dubai company code you will have to use dubai accounting standard that point alone you have to understand how your dubai accounting standards work what are the rules and regulations in it your client is going to tell you normally accounting remains common both the accounting principles leading and non-leading except certain country specific things those certain country specific things are two points one is your fixed asset accounting second one is your taxation you might find different treatment of fixed asset different treatment of a taxation between the leading and non-leading ledger in short between two different accounting principle apart from that there is nothing different everything is same whether you record an expense according to ifrs or according to any other accounting standard you will have to debit expense credit cash or bank correct Every accounting standard will tell the same accounting rules. These are common, up, commonly applicable for all your accounting principles. The only point that we talked about here is asset accounting. And what is the other one? Taxation. Taxation. Now. Localization or legal requirements or hello sir sir what is the use of extension ledger i understand leading and non-leading once we are clear with leading and non-leading ledger only we will be able to understand extension or representative okay. underlying ledgers okay okay would it be possible for you to give us some uh, as far as the benefits of using uh, IFRS as the company going to the non-leading here. We understand that uh, based on what you meant by the leading ledger, is there legal or the localization, but give us some benefits as far as why is coming using IFRS, please. Yeah. Okay, when we talk about localization, legal requirements or company sorry country specific requirements there are two points here point number one is your fixed assets point number two is your taxation now assuming our company Dell and we are operating in these companies Okay, we are Dell and we are operating in these companies. 
sorry these countries now if i say my fixed asset value now whenever you talk about fixed asset value you have to take fixed asset value gross value and accumulated depreciation what next fixed asset net value is this correct yes sir now assuming in india my fixed asset value is let's say everywhere i'll take the same number ignore the currency 1000 everywhere my fixed asset value is 1000 but do we find same rate of depreciation in every country or rate of depreciation differs changes from country to country it differs to changes country to country right your asset accounting or your depreciation treatment on fixed asset is different from one country to the other country let's say in india you may be depreciating at 10 percent straight line method fixed percentage every month you may be depreciating in india assuming in us you are depreciating same asset maybe 15 percent wdv method in singapore let's say you are straight away depreciating based on five years which means within five years your asset value must become zero in dubai for the same asset let's say seven years in australia let's say it is 20 percent now same fixed asset is having different different treatment in each of the countries correct huh? now here i have no other exception i must follow this because this is my local requirement or legal requirement in this particular country here what i will do i will deduct 1000 minus 10 percent i'll show my fixed asset current value as 900 let's say here the same fixed asset value i'll deduct 15 percent 15 percent is how much 150 i'll say this will be 850 here if i say five years 1000 by five how much 250 200 200 200 so if i deduct 200 it will be 800 here if i say 1000 divided by seven this is 142 minus 142 20% 200 this will be again 800 correct huh? now for the same asset let's say everything is the same every asset value is 1000 now are we having same asset final value or it is changing based on the country based on the accounting principle Changing, sir. it is changing based on the accounting principle now we talked about two type of reporting one is local reporting the other one is group reporting for local reporting we will be using local accounting principles according to local accounting principle in each of the country this is how you are representing the fixed asset position clear huh? now on the other side if i put the same thing according to ifrs according to ifrs also everything will be the same this i'll put ifrs and here i'll put local accounting principles Now, according to IFRS, let's say I'll take the same value of the asset. Now, IFRS will tell you same depreciation method because everywhere it is the same accounting principle. Let's say IFRS is talking about 15% straight line method. Everywhere you are going to form the same rate of depreciation. According to this, your fixed asset net value will become 1000 minus 15 percent which is 150 it will be 850 
everywhere am i evaluating my asset with the fixed rate or am i changing the rate fixed sir according to ifrs i am evaluating all my assets in all the countries at fixed valuation now this is possible only when you use common accounting principle that to assigned for leading ledger now when i prepare my consolidation report let's say consolidated balance sheet when i make my consolidated balance sheet let's say on the asset side on the fixed assets side i will be talking or i'll be representing let's say fixed assets gross block what is the value of fixed asset gross value in each of the country 1000 1000 1000 total is 5000 yes correct huh? so i'll be putting 5000 here here i'll be deducting or i'll put less accumulated depreciation it will be flat 15% So on five thousand, if I apply fifteen percent, how much it will be? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Now here I will tell my fixed assets net block. How much it will be? Four thousand two fifty. if i use my accounting principle ifrs for all my company codes it is easy for me to prepare my consolidation reports otherwise i have to value the assets in each of the accounting principle separately separately right according to me these are all my assets these are all dell assets correct huh? according to us everything is related to dell dell fixed asset now on a particular category of fixed asset if your ifrs is talking about 15% straight line method or 15% depreciation irrespective of the country you are going to take the total value of your assets and you are going to deduct 15% from it and this is what we are going to do in our consolidation or group reporting requirement for this purpose you are going to use one accounting principle for all your ledgers in short for all your company code leading ledger and the second one if you talk about taxation point of view from the taxation what will happen if you do any sales you will have different tax system in each of the country correct yes no in a particular country tax rate may be different in the other country tax rate for the same product is different in some other country on the same product there is no tax am i correct yes sir right but when i do a consolidation reporting let's say when i am preparing my pnl when i am preparing my pnl let's say i will be showing what is my sale i will be showing what is my purchases now tax is applicable both on sales and purchases tax is applicable both sales and purchases when i am preparing pnl for the consolidation purpose i am going to take total sales of all the countries am i correct when i am preparing my consolidation reports i am going to take total sales i am going to take total purchases now here each country is talking about different different tax percentage yes no yes sir but here i am talking about sales figure which is total of all these five countries here i cannot come to a conclusion which rate i have to adopt so what we will do we will be adopting the taxation from ifrs accounting system if ifrs is telling you will have to deduct 5% vat or 10% vat on the total sale you are going to pass or you are going to deduct 10% as taxation 
now if these two mismatches are there from every accounting principle it is not possible for us to do a consolidation when you are using a consolidation you must use same accounting principle same accounting rule for all of your company codes to meet that we will be proceeding with ifrs for all the companies ex exclusively for the leading ledger purpose now for non leading ledger purpose you will be using local accounting principle wherein in each of your non leading ledger at the company code level you can pass according to the local government rules according to the local law clear now next point here to make it more understandable till what we have written here till this point okay uh, sir uh, have one question um, here uh, as you said in ifrs uh, we do the consolidation report for all uh, co companies right now sir so in that case is when you when we are preparing the consolidated report uh, uh, that as you said the taxation uh, for each country is different uh, here in india we do uh, pay the income tax or any other tax in some percentage in australia it is different and us is different then how Uh, the nifrs the consolidated tax report is getting generated sir uh, since we are uh, getting the different rates as well as different amounts for the different countries okay so you have two type of reporting one is your internal reporting the other one is external reporting correct huh? correct sir so external reporting is something that you are giving your financial data to the external parties let's say if you are operating in india you will have to give your reporting to the indian officials in their government officials maybe chartered accountants or indian tax authorities yes no yeah so when you are giving your information to the external authorities like taxation or companies act authorities you must follow those local accounting principle whatever the rules regulations that that are applicable in that particular country strictly if you deviate any particular accounting law or any particular logic your financials may not be approved they will reject and asking you to redo or do the corrections am i correct correct you will have to do the rectifications and then you will have to submit it get them approved this okay. is your external reporting which is valid in the respective country on the other side if you are talking about ifrs ifrs is the requirement of your internal internally at group level you want to see what is your overall company's performance what is my total sales across all my companies what is my total revenue across all my companies what is my total value of assets what is my total value of liability for me to do it i have no other option to use except to use the common accounting principle common currency which is ifrs and us dollar this group reporting i am not going to circulate to the external parties this is not evaluated by any government official for that you are meeting the requirement by way of non leading ledger correct huh? correct you have created a non leading ledger and you have met all the local requirements and you have prepared the financial statements according to the legal requirements and you have submitted you got them approved so your requirement is fulfilled from the local perspective the local accounting principle perspective but you have one more reporting requirement called group reporting or consolidation according to this in every organization there is a something called corporate accounting anybody heard this there's something called corporate accounting or corporate finance yes no in every global company any company which is operating with more than two companies in the same country or in different company they will have some team called corporate accounting or corporate reporting team now what this team will do they will monitor all the company code accounting they will give instructions in this kind of a scenarios this is how we are going to deal it 
the complete accounting standards or the complete accounting rules and procedures at group level will be disclosed or mentioned by the corporate accounting corporate finance team now they will be giving the guidelines instructions according to ifrs standards in every company code they will have to follow the accounting based on the instructions from corporate accounting finance because this is the team who is going to prepare your group reporting or consolidation reporting for consolidation reporting for group reporting we will not be using sap we will be using bpc nowadays we are also using SS, sac sap analytics cloud so now let's talk only about BPC. You will be using BPC. Now in BPC, what we are going to do, we will extract TB from SAP. In BPC, what you are going to do? We'll get trial balance from SAP. You will extract a trial balance from SAP. Let's say if you have five company codes. This five company codes you have. You will have trial balance in SAP for this. You will have trial balance in SAP. Correct? Huh? Let's say I'll put. group reporting i'll say sales now assuming in india sales is 1000 assuming everything is in dollar here it's 1200 here it's 1500 here it's 800 here it's 1150 now in group reporting especially in your consolidation purpose what you are going to do you are going to have sales you are only going to have sales now here when you are talking about sales you are getting how many sales figures from your company codes? Five sales figures. You are getting five sales figures. Now on my group reporting, I want to have sales representing only one time. I don't want my sales to show the breakup of five company codes. Here there will be a formula. It's always, let's say this plus this plus this plus this plus this this will be the sales automatically your group reporting will show sales of 5650 if this shows 1200 this is automatically updating 5850 if i change this to 1000 5700 if i change this to 900 it is being updated immediately Correct. Now in your group reporting, this is how you are going to prepare your financials. Sales will reflect only once. And this sales reflection is the formula of different different accounts from your different different company codes. Now this will be formed by your BPC consultant. You have a dedicated consultant for BPC module. Business planning and consolidation. For that, they will extract your financial statement, which is exclusively the trial balance. And based on your trial balance, they are going to make their corporate reporting or group reporting for which they only need your trial balance. They are not concerned about what accounts you are considering and all. So there they are going to make certain adjustments. Let's say depreciation you have. They are not going to consider depreciation from your accounting, your trial balance. You are also going to have depreciation correct yes sir. in your trial balance if you have depreciation for ifrs they will also have depreciation but they will have a different calculation every company code will give different depreciation values same asset but every company code will give different depreciation values in their group group reporting what they will do let's say they'll write assets assuming 8000 they will take depreciation at straight on this assuming 10 percent 800 now this group reporting adjustments they are going to pass or they are going to make in your bpc system 
and the BPSC group reporting level, they'll make these kind of adjustments. Okay, so it is very important for us to understand all this terminology. Otherwise, when we are in a project, you will be hearing these terminologies on a daily basis. Clear? Yes, sir. perfect. Okay. Uh, so, sir, now, uh, come... here again, based on the country specific uh, or else company code currency uh, that we are going to convert that to USD. From the USD, we are going to calculate all this uh, consolidated uh, part, right, now, sir? Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, here we all started from. BPC one now. Yeah. Uh, Please go ahead. BPC provides spread license for this or uh, BPC do we have license or you know, is it a third party or? No, BPC is official SAP product. So companies will purchase the separate license for BPC module. BPC is part of SAP. Oh. Okay, it, it oh. completely works on your is there Excel any, sheet. Uh, third party? No, there is no third party. Oh. BPC is pure SAP product. No third party involvement. Okay. Okay, companies, those who want to do their group reporting or consolidation within SAP, they will go for BPC license. They'll purchase the license for BPC. Otherwise, they can use any third party application to do their financials. But mostly BPC is used. Okay. okay, now here, you got at least base understanding, base idea about what is accounting principle, your reporting structures and all currencies, which ledger we will be using for leading, which ledger we will be using for non-leading. Some basic points about your consolidation group reporting. Uh, I have a query here. Yes. Uh, for leading ledger, it is SAP standard 0L we are using. For non-leading ledger, even though for uh, different countries, we are using the same uh, non-leading ledger key, then how can we differentiate the uh, accounting principle? Yeah. So when you're defining the non-leading ledger, let me show you here to clarify. I think everyone's doubt. ECC is working, I think. Okay. Number of failed attempts to seven. Okay, so in S4 HANA, this is the T code FINSC underscore ledger to use or to view the ledgers. Open this. In this, assuming this is your non-leading ledger, let's say, I'll take this AL, clear? Huh? This is one of the non-leading ledgers. If I take this, if I go to company code settings here, inside the company code, you will have to assign the accounting principle here. Okay, for this company code India, I will be giving Indian accounting principle. If I assign another company code, let's say US, I will be assigning US accounting principle here. If I assign Dubai company code, I will be assigning Dubai accounting principle here. In short, for non-leading ledger, you are going to assign the accounting principle at company code level. Okay. 
Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, now, sir, is that accounting is... principles are predefined, or we need to define the accounting principle? In SAP, you will get certain predefined accounting principles, but you can also create your own your own accounting principle. Because accounting principle is just a, va a variant, nothing, no parameter maintained inside it. It's just a code description. That's it. Nothing beyond that. Okay, if I show you that. Save changes, no. SPRO. If you go to financial accounting, global settings, ledgers, you will find parallel accounting. Inside the parallel accounting, you will find define accounting principles. Open this define accounting principle. If you add a new entry, you are just going to give a code of one, two, three, four, five, six, only four digit code followed by your description save. That's it. You're not going to maintain any parameter, any control, any settings inside the accounting principle. It is just an assignment. Okay. I'll give one, two, three, four. I'll give one, two, three, four. I will save it. Now I have created one accounting principle. Did we mention anything, any rules of accounting principle here? No, right? While posting the entries, we will be posting according to the local rules of, of your accounting. But when you are reporting, you want to know according to which accounting principle we are doing this reporting. When you go to your ledger and company code setting, you will come to know the accounting principle assignment. Clear? Clear. Okay. Now, why we are talking about or why especially we are discussing this accounting principles ledgers at the beginning is everybody is aware of asset accounting. I have one question, sir. Just a minute. Everybody is aware of asset accounting, right? In S4 HANA, Accounting principle is mandatory for asset accounting. If you are not using asset accounting, if you are not using accounting principles, you cannot do asset accounting in S4 HANA. In ECC also you have accounting principles, but in ECC it was optional. Whether you create, use accounting principle or not is optional. Nothing is going to stop you from anywhere. But in S4 HANA, you cannot use asset accounting if you are not using accounting principle concept. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, Sudanshu. In our case, daily, if the daily USA is following the uh, IFRS for local reporting, then do we have to create uh, two ledgers? Two ledgers, you mean to say leading and non leading ledger? Yes, yes, yes. Or entries two times. No, no, two ledger. Leading and non leading. Yeah, we have to create leading and non leading both. In both the ledger, we are following IFRS. No, no, no. This suppose In... a daily VSA is using IFRS for local reporting. Yes. In that case, uh, why do we have to create two ledgers? Like if for uh, group reporting, we are following IFRS and for local reporting also, we are following IFRS. Now, here is where your question is coming from. Yes, sir, this, this point. Right? Now, this point is, is client level setting. This is your client level setting, which means for all your company codes, you must follow the same logic. If you are using same accounting principle, let's say IFRS here, IFRS here also. Still, you need to create two ledgers. Why still you need to create two ledgers is 
now you are going to do something called group reporting consolidation yes right for consolidation purpose you are going to use reporting from this or you are going to extract a trial balance from leading ledger correct yes no yes sir now for my local reporting within us i will be passing the entries according to dl or i'll be reporting from dl ledger or if i want to show any adjustments let's say i want to pass some rectification i need to do some adjustments only to reflect in my local reporting in us but for my group reporting i want to show a different number so such kind of things are not possible point number 1 point number 2 this is a client level setting like this these things are decided at the beginning only stating every company code is going to have two ledgers one leading one non leading leading is used for ifrs non leading is used for your country specific accounting principle even if two countries for any example in in our example us if you are going to use ifrs at both places still you have to create two ledgers settings if you take is this point clear yes sir yes okay yes, could you go go to that ledger setting system okay Select zero L and click any of the company code. Okay. Uh, here we have accounting principle right correct and below the company code setting for ledger i guess uh, we have one more tab accounting principle for ledger yes. this is ledger and company code okay uh, what if we assign a accounting principle here and uh, one more accounting principle we are assigning there in how it is uh, you are going to use this only for the asset accounting purpose okay okay otherwise what you are going to do you are going to assign this accounting principle here this accounting principle is combination of ledger and company code yes this is also ledger and company code right now in s4 hana asset accounting you must have same fiscal year for both the ledgers for all the accounting principles now according to our requirement your leading non leading are they using same reporting cycle april to march or jan to december or these two are different no no different these two are different right when your reporting cycle is different from both the ledgers leading and non leading sap s4 hana will not allow you to perform asset accounting for you to bypass that setting you need to create one more ledger called representative ledger to use representative ledger you are going to create one more accounting principle that accounting principle you will be assigning it here in short for company code i will be using two accounting principles one accounting principle to match with my leading ledger to overcome that inconsistency in this screen Click. suppose i am assigning ifrs and in the second screen for accounting principle for ledger and company code i am assigning I ica how it's going to be the you're not going to use ifrs ica here you are going to use another accounting principle apart from ifrs indian company act and then one more accounting principle that's only a dummy accounting principle 
and this second that is step, created is it exclusively which one this one accounting principle yes 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 you will be assigning it here okay in this screen we will assign ica ica correct in the second one there also ica ICA and one more thing that you are going to create to meet your asset accounting requirement from the S for HANA point of view. Okay, sir. One more thing in the global currency in my company code, it is not coming. Global currency okay. comes from your controlling area. Whatever the currency you assign in controlling area, that currency becomes global currency in your S for HANA system. You cannot manually put this here. This is directly derived from your controlling area, OKKP. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll share this Excel sheet. Just go through these points. Try to understand. And if you get any questions, any confusions, please make a note of it because these are very, very important. Your entire remaining SAP learning is based on these points. Your reporting, your posting, whatever you call it, is based on this. If you are clear with this, what we are discussing here, the remaining part of your SAP config understanding is very simple, straightforward. It's all topic based learning from now on, if you are clear with this point. Because we are not supposed to know these points in middle, you are strictly supposed to know these points at the beginning itself. Even though it creates a little confusion, but it is still fine. Your confusions will get clarified within a couple of days. When we see all these settings on SAP, you will be very clear. But it is must that you must know these points in the beginning itself. Am I clear? One quick question uh, for a given company code, whether I can have more than one non-leading ledger? Yes, you can have multiple non-leading ledgers based on your requirement for a given company code yes because non-leading ledger is company code specific because somewhere you mentioned that we can mention only one non-leading ledger no that is to meet your reporting local reporting requirement This is only to meet one local reporting requirement. This point we were talking in connection with your accounting principle. In every company, we are going to have one local accounting principle. Sorry, in every country. Now, all these country specific accounting principles will be grouped in one common non leading ledger. And for any other reporting requirement purpose, you can create additional non-leading ledgers. There is no limit on number of non-leading ledgers you are going to assign for each of your company code. Because we are not going to pass a manual entry there. Any entry that you post in your normal leading ledger will get copied to all the ledgers that are assigned to your company code. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Can you insert the one column for the currencies also in the table? Here you mean to say? Ah, yeah, sir. This table. will be dollar everywhere and for this currency will be INR this will be dollar Singapore dollar AED and then AUD clear okay sir. Okay, sir. 
sir i have one another doubt in a practical scenario uh, if we are uh, in uh, imports are uh, purchasing from different countries uh, with uh, different uh, uh, country specific currencies we are paying that uh, imports Customs. but uh, in in uh, in the point of import and exports hello yeah 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 go ahead yeah. Uh, we are uh, importing that uh, goods uh, in that time we are paying that uh, uh, currencies uh, based on that uh, their currencies of the country correct uh, in the point yeah. of exporting we will always collecting the in usd it depends that that is called as your transaction currency or document currency based on your transaction currency or the document currency this is your group currency this is your local currency you are not going to prepare any reporting on your transaction currency no trial balance no pnl no balance sheet is generated at document currency or transaction currency level yeah okay okay so you can do transaction in any currency but while recording the transaction your transaction will be automatically converted into your respective company code currency and group currency these are auto converted okay there is a currency revaluation point is involved in this scenarios yes you have two things foreign currency valuation foreign currency translation okay okay those are separate okay sir. those are different uh, topics okay thank you sir Sir, in the real time, uh, when we are creating these non-leading ledgers, so do we create it with different names? Different name in the sense? Like you code, you mean to say? D yeah, the codes. D L. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we may create N L or L one, ledger one, ledger two, or N L simply non-leading. Like all the leading uh, non-leading ledgers with the same NL. Same code, same code, correct. Okay. Okay. For everything, there will be a naming convention. Let's say if you are creating non-leading ledgers, assuming your naming convention is L1, L2. If there is only, if there is an existing non-leading ledger called L1, you are strictly supposed to create next non-leading ledger as L2. You cannot deviate this naming convention. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right then. So we'll connect today evening at 9 p.m. again for the regular discussion. Okay. Sir.